BBC Radio 4 presents from the BBC Radio 4 Drama Theatre in London before a live-in audience the National Theatre of Brent in the arts and how they was done conceived, presented by and starring myself Desmond Olivier Dingle the artistic director of the company Right, thank you. <laughs> and also featuring Raymond Box. <laughs> well, that's enough. That's enough, please. That's Raymond. What? That's enough now, please. No, it's not me. <laughs> it's not me, Desmond. Right, it's right, them. Right, right, settle down, please. We've got a great lot to get through. Right, now, where was we? Um, Raymond? Um, what? You have the first line, I think, Raymond. Pardon? And now, episode... Yes, I know what the line actually is, Desmond, thank you. Right, well, you'd like to say it, please. Certainly. And now, episode... <laughs> Four! Four! As we travel far away now from the exotic and mysterious world of the Taj Mahal we just done, over the seas and oceans of time himself, to the dark and forbidden world of the 1970s. <laughs> centuries. Se Seventeen centuries. Nineteen. Nin Nineteen ninety-seven. No. What? <laughs> 19th century. Yeah, fine. If you can't deliver a simple line, Raymond. I Rayman. can't deliver a single line. Well, it's too late now. I'll do it myself. But uh, look. No, I no, no. Can... Too late. To the dark oh, and, and forbidding world, world yeah, of, of the, the 19... 1970s. Right. <laughs> 1970s. Time of the Partridge family, the Pogo Stick, and the Bronte sisters. <laughs> really? No, Raymond. I was being ironic. Pardon? Anyway. The setting of tonight's episode is the popular English county town of Yorkshire. <laughs> Home of the Braith. No, Raymond. <laughs> Home of the Yorkshire Terrier, the Yorkshire Pudding, and the Duchess of York. <laughs> or as she is affectionately known... Porky. No. <laughs> Yorky. Oh, yeah, yeah, sorry. You're right. 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 But most of all, for the famous novels of probably the most famous novelist this country or the world has ever known. The Brontes. Or the Brontes. <laughs> no, the Bronte sisters. Yes. So, 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 come, so come, come with us now as we is travelling in time across the misty, mindy moors of yesterday, <laughs> year of the 19th. 70s. No, no, it's not the... But look! <sighs> look! Crags and stones pass below us. Hills and dales also. What are they doing? They are a wuthering in the wind. And look! What is that looming up out of the swirling Yorkshire's mists? Why, it is a little, tiny, unknown, famous Yorkshire village that time forgot. And there, look... What is that dark and forbidden house there in the village look? Why, it is the setting of our story here this evening tonight. Yes, the Brontes Parsonage, no less. Home and birthplace of the Brontes and their father, the Parson. Yes, who knows? The Parsons knows. <laughs> What great arts begun there, in that cold and humble dwelling, surrounded as it was by those Wuthering Moors, or heights, obviously. Thank you. So let us approach now, travellers from another age, walk up the threshold and look in the windows of that lonely... Goat herd. No. <laughs> hey, right. Birthplace. All right. Because there they are, look, sitting around their dining table. But who are they, Desmond? They are all the Brontes, Raymond. All the Brontes? Yes. So, d did they see us, Desmond? 
I'm sure, sure they, they, uh, they, they did, yes, Raymond. So, so, so they saw us. What? The Brontes. <laughs> well, may, maybe, yes. The Brontesaurus. <laughs> <laughs> right. The Brontesaurus. Yes, very amusing, Raymond. <laughs> <laughs> Hilarious. <laughs> so maybe continue, please? Yep. Thank you. <laughs> so let us now open the door <laughs> and cross that sacred threshold of time and history and actually pull up a chair and hear what they are actually saying with the actual words who, according to our researchers, was almost certainly exactly what and how they would exactly possibly have spoken <laughs> at the time. Oh, sisters, sisters, look at our father, Parson Bronte. As he's staring out of the window, he doesn't look too happy. What can the matter be, I wonder? Shall we ask him, sisters? Yes. You, <laughs> you don't look too happy, father, if you don't mind us saying so. What's up, father? Do tell us your daughters, the Bronte sisters. Yes. <laughs> It is true, my daughters. I am not too happy as it happens. Oh, dear father, do tell us what is it that is the matter. Oh, my daughters, the Bronte sisters. I wish I could keep it from you. You are such ladylike ladies. You should not have to worry your ladies' heads about such things. We can take it, father, can't we, sisters? Yes. Oh, all right, then. So are you all here, then? Charlotte? Yes. Anne? Yes. Emily? Yes. Jane Eyre and Jane Austen? Yes, yes. Good. So anyway, listen, you Bronte sisters. If you want to know the truth, here it is. Tell us, Father, tell us. Right. I'm afraid I have to inform you we are very, very poor. Oh, no! <laughs> so what does that mean, Father? Tell us like it is. Well, if we don't have enough money, all we can do is go in the Victorian 19th century poorhouse and eat gruel all day long. <laughs> Yes, and be ruled with a rod of iron by the wicked beagle. By the wicked beagle? Oh, no! What will he do to us, then? I will tell you what he will do. What? He will take our lovely house and home, and we'll have nothing. Nothing, do you hear me? What will we do, daughters? There must be something we can do, mustn't there, sisters? Yes. <laughs> Let's all have a good think and meet back here in five minutes. Are we all agreed? Yes. All right, my Bronte's daughters, back in five. Good heavens, doesn't time fly? <laughs> Here we are again, and it's five minutes later. <laughs> so, any ideas, all my daughters of the Bronte sisters? Yes, Father. We have, as it happens. Good. We've been thinking we could open the house up in a manner of speaking. Open the house up? Yes. How do you mean precisely? Make it a kind of museum kind of thing. We could call it the Bronte Museum or Parsonage. Charge people to go around with concessions for kiddies, OAPs and group bookings. Plus extra income for the Bronte Tea Room and the Bronte Gift Shop. Selling a wide variety of Bronte soaps, Bronte room fresheners and an attractive array of Bronte jam biscuits and fudges. How delicious. Yes, good idea, daughters. Um, possibly I'm being a little pedantic, but, um, don't we have to be famous for something before someone would come all that way off the beaten track to see a museum? Famous? Just a thought. <laughs> then the situation is absolutely hopeless, and we might as well just give up, shouldn't we, sisters? Yes. <laughs> Wait a minute. What is it, my Bronte daughter's sisters? How about writing an English novel? Good heavens. Do you mean writing a definitive 19th century English novel by any chance? Yes. That's a marvellous idea, my Bronte sister's daughters. But hasn't that been done, though, for example, by Charles Dickens and other famous novelists such as Charles Darwin and Charles Dance? Oh, no. <laughs> yes, you're absolutely right, Father Bronte. We hadn't thought of that, but, but wait a minute. I'll tell you what's not been done recently. What's that, might I ask? The definitive 1970s English novels as done by ladies. As done by ladies. That's something that's never been heard of in the history of the world so far recently. Quick, quick, sit down at the kitchen table and start writing as soon as possible. But wait a minute. How will you find all them words to make all the famous novels you'll be writing? Because they're not any old words, are they, to make a famous novel? No, they're certainly not, Father. <laughs> <laughs> but, but 
don't worry, because we've got all them words waiting inside us. Waiting to be born. Just waiting to be born into a famous novel. Come on, girls. The world is waiting. Ready, sisters? Yes. Righto, then. <laughs> so I'll just wind the old grandfather clock up. And leave you to it, my famous sisters, my Brontes. So, off you go then, but don't be late to bed. Right so, Father. Yes. <laughs> so, all through the night they wrote, on and on and on, till morning came. <laughs> Good heavens, look at you all still writing. Yes, we are, Father. Aren't we, sisters? Yes. But look at all them words everywhere. I've never seen so many on every conceivable surface. On the writing paper, on the tablecloth, even on the Bronte tea towels. Where do you find all them words? That's what I'd like to know. Who knows, Father? They just keep coming and coming, don't they, sisters? Yes. Anyway, won't disturb you. All right. And still they did not stop writing, but carried on writing all through the day. My goodness, still writing? I can barely believe it. But look, it's evening again. Anyway, just wind the old clock up. <laughs> Don't be late to bed. <laughs> Still here writing. <laughs> How much you've been writing this time? Absolutely unbelievable. Anyway, just wind the old clock up. <laughs> Don't be late to bed. <laughs> and the sun came and went, and the seasons changed, and the weeks turned into moths. And the moths turned into... No, 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 no. What? The, the moths turned into... No, no, months. Pardon? Months. Moths. No. It says moths, Desmond. It's not moths. Weeks don't turn into moths. <laughs> Could do. <laughs> Raymond, I'm telling you, they don't. I don't know, Desmond, I didn't write it. No, no, I wrote it, Raymond, and I'm saying it's months. Moths. No, months. It's a mistake. Moths is a mistake. It's not my problem, is it? Right, have it your own way. Moths it is. Cute. Thank you, Raymond. And the weeks turned into moths. Ridiculous. <laughs> and the moths turned into years. Marvellous. <sighs> and so at last, old Father Bronte come downstairs and saw all his exhausted daughters. And lo, he did say unto them... Pens down, please. Turn over your papers, please. <laughs> Thank you. But stop writing. It's been four and a half years. That's enough now. <laughs> now just collect up your papers, please, Charlotte. Why so, Father? Finished, gals? Yes. Good. <laughs> so there we are. Well, let's hear a bit, shall we? Who's going first? I am Charlotte. I am, as you know, four foot six. And I have written Jane Austen. <laughs> It was a dark and stormy night as I rushed across the dales. Oh, Mr. Rochester! Oh, Mr. Rochester! I cried. Well, that was marvellous. <laughs> Thank you. Next one, please. I am Emily. I am strange and moody with no close friends, and I spend all my time wuthering on the moors, or heights, obviously. And I have written the well-known bestseller, Wuthering Heights. <laughs> It was a dark and stormy night as I rushed across the moors. Oh, Mr. Heathcliff! Oh, Mr. Heathcliff! I cried. Another scorcher from Emily. Thank you. And quite different, too. Yes. <laughs> and finally, Anne Bronte. Hello, I am Anne Bronte. I am the mild and less talented younger sister. But my novels are sharp and ironic. I have written The Tenant of Wildfire Hall. <laughs> In your own time. Thank you. It was a dark and stormy night as I rushed across the hall. Oh, Mr. Tenant of Wildfell Hall! Oh, Mr. Tenant of Wildfell Hall! I cried. Good heavens! Well, each of those is an absolute gem. So, quick, let's send them to the publishers immediately, shall we, girls? Yes. <laughs> And so it was, they posted their novels to London Town, to the well-known publishers, The House of Penguin. <laughs> also known, of course, as The Penguin House. And time passed, and the clock tick-tocked on the wall, and then one day, on a frosty, misty morning, the postie arrived, bearing a package from London Town himself. <laughs> 